that we need to prioritize the needs and the security of all Americans. And right now, we're hamstrung from doing that. The longer we go without a Speaker of the House, the more lawmakers start to talk about the national security implications of Congress not doing its job. I'm Connor O'Brien, and I cover defense issues on Capitol Hill. And we're going to talk about the concerns that people have about how the speaker debacle puts U.S. national security at risk. Representative Mike Gallagher, who's on the Armed Services and Intelligence Committee, said he was supposed to get a briefing from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, John Milley, about security issues in the Indo-Pacific. I'm informed by how security, but technically... I don't have a clearance. I'm a member of the Intel Committee. I'm on the Armed Services Committee, and I can't meet in the skiff to conduct essential business. Members of Congress can't get sworn in until a speaker is elected, and until the House is sworn in, committees can't form. Chairmen can't be named. New members can't be put on committees. Subcommittee chairmen can't be named. And then most importantly, legislation can't be passed, and committees can't hold hearings. Pretty much every committee in Congress is stalled, but we're starting to hear a lot about committees that do foreign policy and national security work not being able to do their jobs, such as the House Armed Services Committee, the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and the House Intelligence Committee. When Congress is in session, national security committees are doing any number of things to oversee the Pentagon, the State Department, the agencies that make up the intelligence community. So what we're hearing from the presumptive heads of these committees is that they can't do critical national security oversight site work as long as this debate over who should be the Speaker of the House drags on. It's certainly an inconvenience for chairmen for national security oriented lawmakers who wanted to do things like get classified briefings, get to work on day one. But the military is still doing its job. The Senate has been sworn in. We have vehicles to continue to communicate with both chambers, and that communication will continue throughout the foreseeable future. If this dispute drags on for weeks and that starts cutting into the legislative work that they want to do and that they do each year, for example, the Armed Services Committee produces a bill, the National Defense Authorization Act, which has passed every year for more than six decades. If that is delayed, then there'd be concerns about being able to negotiate it with the Senate and get it to the president's desk by the end of the year. And as McCarthy tries to win the speakership, promises he makes with lawmakers, many conservatives opposed billions of dollars in Ukraine aid and are skeptical of big increases to the defense budget. $45 billion for Ukraine, $41 billion for emergency spending. None of that extra spending was paid for. So when are we going to stop that. It's possible that he could pledge spending cuts that rein in those things to appeal to conservatives. That choice, however, is potentially fraught politically for him because there's still a deep well of support for robust military funding and aiding Ukraine against Russia in the Republican Party. So we're really kind of in uncharted water. And if Kevin McCarthy is not the speaker, that could call into question what the Republican plans are for committees moving forward if you have a different leader.